Hello, welcome to lesson 13. In this lesson, we are going to look at the sidewise displacement of light rays and also shall look at the determination of the refractive index. Let's begin by looking at the sidewise displacement of light rays. So we need to know that when a ray moves from one media to another, it undergoes a displacement sideways. And that displacement is called lateral displacement or sidewise displacement. Let us consider this. If we have a glass block, we have a glass block, and then we have a ray which is incident into that glass block at an angle I, and that glass block is of thickness T, and then the angle of refraction is R, the displacement, the sideways displacement D is going to be this. So that sideways displacement, how do we get it? We elongate this or we produce this ray here with dotted lines, we produce it with dotted lines, and then draw a normal from this C and to that line, or from that, from that line and to C. That is going to be the sidewise displacement. This must be normal. That normal distance is what we need. So how do we get that distance? We shall consider this C, triangle ABC. If you consider the triangle ABC, we can get SC. How do we get SC? This is a hypotenuse. And then we also have the T, which is the adjacent. So we shall use cos. So cos of R, this angle is R, cos of R is equal to the adjacent, which is T, over the hypotenuse, which is SC. And if you make SC the subject, it's going to be SC is going to be T over cos of R. Then also if you use the triangle A, C, D, we can also get this D and SC using this D. But we need now get this angle here. The angle C, A, D can be got using I, because it is vertically opposite to this one, I minus R will give us the angle CAD. Then for us now to get SC is going to be opposite, which is D over the hypotenuse, which is SC. So that is sine of, sine of that angle CAD. So sine of I minus R is going to be D over SC. And therefore SC is going to be D over sine of I minus R. So we have the two equations. We equate the two equations and we get this. That is T over cos R is equal to D over sine of I minus R. When we equate that, we shall make D the subject. And our D is going to be T sine of I minus R over cos of R. Let's make a note here. We need to note that we also have this displacement BC. And that is called the horizontal displacement. How do we get this horizontal displacement? This is opposite and this is adjacent. So that is tan. Tan of R is going to be equal to BC over R. Sorry, over T. And therefore, BC is going to be T times tan of R. That's how we can get BC as T times tan of R. Let's look at some examples. One, the figure below shows monochromatic light incident from a liquid of refractive index 1.33 onto the upper surface of a glass block of refractive index 1.42. That is the diagram given. And they want us to calculate the horizontal displacement AB and also the lateral displacement BC of the margin light of the emergent light. Now they have given us this one as 40 degrees, but we need to know that we measure the angle of incidence from the normal, so we shall get 90 minus the 40, which will give us 50. So let us draw a new diagram here with the 50 there, with the 50, so we can get this R. How do we get this R? Use Snell's law. This one we know very well. We have the the refractive index here and the refractive index here. So we shall use Nail's law. And then when we use Nail's law, we shall get our R as a 
45.8 degrees. After getting that, remember we want to get the horizontal displacement AB. So that is going to be opposite over hypotenuse tan. So we shall use the other formula we already derived, where we shall get AB as T, the one the 18 centimeters times the tan of R, which is tan of 45.8. And that is going to give us 18.51 centimeter. Then also we can get lateral displacement from the formula. And then replace for I, R, T. And when we replace that, we shall have that. And therefore our D is going to be 1.89 centimeters when we use the calculator to compute that. We can also use first principles to come up with that. We, shall also use, we can also use first principles to come up with that. Let us look at the second example. Monochromatic light is incident from the liquid onto the surface of a transparent glass block where the sides of the block are plane and parallel. If the speed of light in the liquid is 2.42 times 10 power 8 meters per second and the speed of light in the glass is 1.92 times 10 power 8 meters per second calculate the lateral displacement of the emergent beam yeah this diagram also is important for us to have some information was lacking here but it is in this diagram for example the angle of incidence is supposed to be 60 degrees and then the thickness here is 10 degrees let us see that information was missing but it is now given so we have 60 here so we can get the R we can get this R since we have but now we don't have the refractive index let us first get the refractive index refractive index is equal to the speed of light in a vacuum of a speed of light in the medium so the refractive index of the liquid is going to be the speed of light in the liquid of a speed of, sorry of in the medium of a speed of light in the liquid which will be 3.0 times 10 power 8 divided by speed of light in the liquid which is 2.42 times 10 power 8 when we divide the two we shall get 1.239 similarly we shall also get the refractive index of glass we shall just replace c is the same then the v is going to be 1.92 times 10 power 8 meters per second and when you divide the two we shall get 1.563 Using Snell's law, we shall be able to get R. So let us use Snell's law and get R. Snell's law states that we have any NL sine 60 is equal to N glass sine R. And then we replace for NL and then N glass. And then make R the subject by dividing through first by 1.563. Then we make sine R the subject and then we get this the sine inverse of that value after dividing by 1.563. When we get the sine inverse, we shall get 43.4 degrees. Of course, it will be 43.35. Then we can round off to one decimal place. Then we shall also get theta. After that, we shall get this theta. We need that theta because remember, we want to get this BC. So if we, to get this theta, we shall get the 60 minus that R which is 43.4 and we shall get 16.6 degrees after getting that angle theta as 16.6 degrees we shall get this BC first by getting AB so we have the R use the R to get AB so that AB can be got this is hypotenuse and then we have this tail which is a adjacent so we shall use cos and if we use cos we shall get our AB as a that. First of all, if using cos, shall cross multiply this and we get our AB as 10 over cos of 43.4. And that will give us 13.76. If we cross multiply this and make AB the subject, we shall get 13.76 centimeters. After getting AB, the hypotenuse we need the opposite so we shall get the tan 
sorry, the sine of theta. So sine of theta, which is sine of 16, is equal to BC over AB, which is 13.76. So we make BC the subject, and therefore BC is going to be 13.76 times sine of 16.6, and that will give us 3.93 centimeters. Let's also look at the determination of refractive index. We are going to determine the refractive index of a small quantity of a liquid using a concave mirror method. So this one is mainly used for determining the refractive index of a small quantity of a liquid. Let's look at the setup. So what you are going to do is get your concave mirror, place it on the table with its reflecting surface facing upwards, and then we are going to clamp a pin, an object pin horizontally, such that its tip lies in the principal axis of this concave mirror. Then you are going to move it up and down vertically, up and down, shall move it up and down, that is the pin, we are going to move it up and down, until when its image coincides with the object, until when its image coincides with the object by the no parallax method. Then after that, we shall measure the distance from O and to the bench, and that distance will be measured as R centimeters. So that's going to be the radius of curvature of that convex, of that concave mirror, sorry, of that concave mirror. After measuring that radius of curvature, then we are now going to pour in the small quantity of liquid. We pour that small quantity of liquid, and when we pour, we repeat the procedure until when the image coincides with the object again by no parallax method. We repeat the procedure. Then this time round, when we measure that distance, it will be of course a new distance, and that distance is going to be measured as h, still in centimeters. After measuring that, so we have the h, and then we also have the r. So for us to get the refractive index, it is going to be r divided by h. That's going to be the refractive index, r divided by h. Now we are going to show that. We can show that n is equal to r divided by h. Let us see the theory of the experiment. So this is the this setup. So we have this the liquid. So this is the image and the object at the same point. This is the center of curvature. So we are going to draw a ray from this object onto the liquid, and that ray is going to be refracted. It's going to be refracted, and it's going to appear to come from the center. It's going to appear to come from the center. That's why, actually, we are having this continuing. So it's going to be appearing to come from the center. Now, if this angle of incidence is I1, then the angle of refraction is I2. And if this is I1, it is alternating to this one, so the, even this one will also be I1. And if this is I2, remember this one is being produced, so even this angle is going to be I2 because it's going to be uh, corresponding to this one here. So after drawing that, now we are going to apply Snell's law at N. So apply Snell's law, which is N, we are moving from air to, to the liquid. So N air, sine I1 is equal to N glass, so it is equal to N liquid, sine I2, applying Snell's law. But how can we get this sine I and then sine R? Using this diagram here, from that diagram here, we shall get sine I1. So sine I1, sine I1 using this I1 here, sine of I1 is going to be opposite, which is Nm over hypotenuse, which is Ni. And also sine of I2 is opposite, which is Nm divided by hypotenuse, which is Nc. So we shall have that. Then we shall uh, replace that here. And when we replace, we shall have that. Then, remember, this is Nm, Nm will cancel, and then when we make Nl the subject, we shall have Nc, 
over n i remember this one is 1 n a is 1 now let's also make some some, some assumption here that uh, n is very close to m if this n is very close to m if this n is very close to m then the distance m i is approximately equal to the distance n i and also the distance m c is approximately equal to the distance n c that's the assumption you are making then another assumption you are going to make is that uh, if you make that assumption and put it here then you shall have where we have m n c we shall have m c and uh, where we have n i we shall have m i then another assumption you are going to make is that uh, this liquid is a small quantity is a small quantity so the depth here is going to be negligible this depth is going to be negligible and if it is negligible then the distance then the distance m i is approximately equal to the distance p i and the distance m c is approximately equal to the distance p c because this thickness is negligible the m p is negligible and if you make that assumption it means that uh, we shall have where we have m c we can as well have we can as well have p c which is going to be r p c which is equal to r or c p which is equal to r and where we have m i is equal to i p and if we replace that here we shall have r divided by i p where r is the radius of curvature and i p is the distance from here up to here which is actually the h and that is shown let us make a note and this note states that if the specimen liquid is of reasonable quantity then its depth d cannot be ignored so assuming this is of a reasonable quantity then we cannot neglect the d as we have assumed here and so that d will be there that distance that depth mc which is equal to d will not be neglected and so we shall remain with this scenario and if we remain with that scenario we shall have our mc will be the r that distance r cp minus the mp which is d and also mi will be the ip ip minus this mc which is d and that is going to be the refractive index thank you for your attention see you in the next lesson